gaming series? Uh, I'm still gonna I'm still gonna predict Method to win, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, method definitely they need the win if you put it like that method yeah you know uh it, the, the sentiment that you're saying is definitely true you know this is a team that we would almost never bet against them against anybody right uh so definitely uh they're gonna have their work cut out for them here we're gonna see the comps here both teams leading with their strongest hand red warrior shaman versus shadow priest mage now this is a matchup in favor for the shadow priest mage so uh method definitely happy with this but this is uh so this is kind of what they expected to run into we'll see if kawana gaming can overcome those odds they are extremely good at this uh, at this red warrior so uh, if anybody can make it happen it's definitely going to be them going to see uh, zuni here forced to trade out his fade right away in the early stages here likely to be a bit more of a long uh, game here between these teams in terms of their composition. Nerd Rage and Kara are pushing out towards midfield though, going after Zuniaki, who's just activated Void Eruption. Double Psychic Scream Silence. They get triple crowd control onto the Warrior. That was a beautiful setup by Method EU. Now swapping over to the Red Paladin, trying to clutch out a Divine Shield. However, Kara is running the legendary Reign of Ancient Kings, which allows him significant damage reduction when he dips low on health, saving him there and preventing the Divine Shield from having to be used. Definitely big value from that legendary in this matchup specifically. Kara and Nerd Rage still continuing the chase, attacking whoever is closer to Tana. At the moment, that is Zuniaki. Deja is working on resetting the combustion with the shifting power and a couple of fireballs. Potentially looking to get in and get aggressive here with the Dragon's Breath Polymorph as well. The Psychic Scream Silence setups appear to be how Method EU want to close this game out. Silence is coming up in three seconds, so I'm looking to see Zuniaki set that up once again. Yeah, I mean, let's see if they can do it. One thing I've noticed, one difference uh, in this matchup is Kawana Gaming has changed their racials. So instead of playing Horde, they're playing Alliance. So Kara playing the Human Retribution Paladin and Nerd Rage on that Gnome is going to allow him to use that Escape Artist to potentially get away. Kara right now taking kind of a huge hit of damage. Let's see if he can hold on. Pummel now onto Zuniaki. Looks like he will be okay through this combustion with basically no crowd control on Tana. A Dragon's Breath, potential Sheep coming in from Theja, from Tessia. Let's see if he can find it, and let's see if there's any more damage. It really feels like Nerd Rage is going to be fine. Car throwing in some off heals. He's a little bit low, and he's just so far overextended. Even though the damage is minor, all that minor damage does add up. Finally, Tana has a chance to reconnect. You can see Chaz at 50% mana sitting down for a drink, and this is going to be so important for Method EU. That's all it takes for Method EU to win the game is just the silence with the Psychic Core. That amount of crowd control with the combustion is more than enough damage they need to win. They just have to keep doing that over and over and over. And if they can do it deep enough and dampening, it becomes even more difficult for Tana to really deal with. Yep, and uh, for uh, for Kawana Gaming, the best way, I mean, their way to, to set up these one shots is basically they need to hodge somebody and storm bolt uh, the healer. Like if they can get a hammer of justice on Zuniaki, get a stun on the chest uh, with a storm bolt at the same time, uh, they could 100 zero somebody like that. But uh, honestly, the strength of the comp that Method is running is that they always have something to trade. And uh, you know, if they do it on Zuni, well, he's always going to have a dispersion. He's always going to have a fade. If you do it on Tessia, he's most likely going to uh, be able to survive that. You know, Zuniaki gripping him uh, away from the one shot, mass dispelling, and just throwing out heals as well. In addition to cauterize and ice block and alter time, uh, it just means that Method comp is very, very tanky. So. Uh, they can't really stop drinks on the side of Kawana Gaming, and if they try to just do setups, uh, here we're going to see one, Zuniaki just fades. As soon as the Hammer of Justice is on Chaz, before he even gets a Storm Bolt, then he just fades, Master Spells it. If they kick the Master Spell, he can Shadow Man himself, and uh, it just feels like uh, it really is Method to use a matchup to lose because of that. Um, whereas they, all they have to do is just land a Dragon's Breath Sheep, or even just stall the game long enough in dampening, and they're going to be able to take down either the Warrior or the Rat. Uh, most likely the Rat with a Combustion, but we'll see. Uh, this is a scary situation for Zuni. Anytime he's on 50% HP, uh, if they can connect uh, with uh, some big damage from the from the Rat, if the Rat gets a Winged proc or anything, uh, they can definitely erase him as well. So uh, it's, uh, it's a matchup where you're not going to really see anybody's HP bars move that much, but when they do, it's got, they're going to move very fast. All right, let's see. They're going after Thasia. Decent damage. Chaz goes for a Holy Light, catches it. Very slow casted Holy Lights, but trying to play efficient. 
Suniaki getting swapped to. Car looks like he wants to run away. Seeing Chaz chase him. He's anticipating a hammer of justice and he's outranging Chaz and trying to avoid that at all costs. Car is probably the most cautious Rep Pellet, and I want to name him cautious uh, with his positioning. He's never <laughs> overextending and he's always aware of where the incoming stun is on himself. Trying to set up the team here. Mass dispel from Zunyaki though with the fade. Just going to remove it. A free trade. Now Voider options. Zunyaki's getting aggressive. Car is on the run and Overwatch comes in from Nerd Rage trying to catch the Hammer of Justice. They don't manage to catch it. Chaz holds on to it. They're pushing Chaz away. Car is still just max ranging Chaz. Not wanting to overextend. Maybe trying to set up a drink here on the pillar. Mana actually isn't that great for Tana. You normally expect the Shaman to be ahead. Sanctuary from Kara. This is why he's positioned so far back, almost as if he's a caster, so you can avoid being cross-crowd controlled and utilize that Sanctuary to get Tana out of a silence. Even with removing that silence, we saw him dip very low. Zuniaki, it looks like, is running the Void Elf, so he is able to escape from melee attackers quite easily. That's an interesting choice on the Shadow Priest. Yeah, I mean, I mean, definitely in this matchup, it's just so important to get away. Kara finally reconnecting to Tessia. Let's see what kind of damage that they really have available. This is not the Avenging Wrath, so not too much. Just really trying to keep him on the back foot. That Warrior Retribution Paladin consistent damage is what's going to try to get Chaz out of mana. At the same time, Chaz realizes it's an easy way to lose the game, so he's constantly repositioning, constantly running away, making it difficult for Nerd Rage and Kara to be in the open for too long. Big damage! Uh... Goodbye! Good night! Well. Kara has the Divine Shield, but he gets erased, and this is the problem. Uh, I just, when you see this matchup play out on ladder sometimes, uh, I feel like the Shadow Priest Mage, they don't run away as much as they should, but when you're just run away, running away, constantly creating space, just going for these one-shots and just a really, really quick uh, burst window, it becomes so scary for that Rep Warrior, and Method EU is going to be happy to walk away with that one. Yeah, most definitely starting off on a good foot here on the side of Method EU. First game victory here in this best of five series against Kiwana Gaming. Let's break down that first game victory here from Method. I mean, it's just, uh, I mean, they kind of under-responded here. Uh, you can see it as well on the right side of your screen. Everybody has all of their uh, defensives more or less here. They're going after Tessia here. Nerd Rage going to be going over onto Zuniaki here. Kara doing a bit of a split going after Tessia. Here's the wings, and there is big damage from those wings. And now uh, he's kind of retreating here a little bit, and there's the setup. Uh, they get just a psychic horror dispel <laughs> on, on Tana. Like, that's that's the only crowd control they have. Is a, a, Wait, oh, he stone-formed. He stone-formed the silence, and he had a vampiric touch on him, uh -oh. and, and he... He psychic horrored himself instead of the silence, and that was enough time to kill Kara. <laughs> Through the reign of the ancient kings, it proc when yeah. he was really low health, but I mean, that's just kind of what happens. And that's why, I mean, we've seen this matchup. It, it feels like the best way for the Shadow Priest Mage to play the matchup is just you don't even go for polymorphs, literally just win in a silence, like a three second crowd control, just burst someone down. And that's, that's what you have to do. And uh, Method EU, they're playing it exactly how they should. And this is just such a nightmare situation here for Kiwana Gaming because we've seen the story play out over and over and over, and it's always this result. Yeah, and uh, just a quick tip there as well. It's something that we see uh, like the top Shadow Priests do. If you're playing against a Dwarf, uh, the reason why they're playing Dwarf is to remove your Silence with Stone Form. Uh, you can just use it to dispel it, and then you, just, like, you have a Trinket for Silence, and then you have your Stone Form for Silence as well. Um, so what a lot of Shadow Priests do is they just Vampiric Touch the uh, healer, uh, if he has stone form, and then they silence him. And even if you dispel yourself, you get crowd control like that. Uh, and that's what happened there, and it won them the game. So uh, definitely heads up play from Zuni, but also a lot of burst from, from Tessia. And uh, in terms of this matchup, I, I think uh, Kawana are going to need a miracle. Uh, this, is the, this is the comp oh. that consistently beats them. They have Ret Rogue. They were playing Ret Rogue earlier on in the circuit. I wonder if they didn't want to blind lock it because Method has other things that might have been really hard for that, or if it's just Ret Rogue isn't working anymore for them at all, maybe in war games or something. Because um, that seemed to be their answer for the the Mage Paladins that were making the Ret Warrior have a tough time. So I do wonder if Nixie comes out here in game number two. I think it's a good map for it. Um, unlikely that we see Waz throughout this series, although we see him now. So, you know, take it in if you're a Waz fan. 
um, with this specific <laughs> matchup. With this specific matchup, I think it's just the Shadow Priest Mage is going to be the best option uh, for Method EU. And uh, I think it's more important to note that Method EU really can't afford any more losses uh, in the circuit if they want to qualify because we're already, this is the third week. There's only one more weekend. Uh, I mean, Skillcap just got their fifth win. So uh, to me, the pressure is on. Uh, Method EU, it's I no longer allowed to make mistakes. I want to see, you know what composition I want to see Kiwana Gaming run? I want to see them run the Warrior Death Knight. Uh, I think it's actually okay. Like, I feel like Warrior Frost? Death Knight, Resto Shaman. Yeah, just a Frost Death Knight. Yeah. Just run at the Mage the entire game. Really limit his mobility. Slow down his ability to generate combustions. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know how much I like the Ret Warrior uh, at this point. I just feel like we've seen it play out over and over and over. We've seen strategy adaptations. Yeah changing their racials it's just always the same thing i mean if the way you lose the game is you get silenced and then you die like it, it doesn't you know it doesn't end up uh working out too well for you as we've seen so uh, i really feel like nixie coming in on like a frost death night with nerd rage and 10 on the rest of shaman now maybe it's scary but i think on these small maps it would allow them a lot of opportunities i'd at least like to see them experiment with it because yeah. it didn't look too bad and that was before some of the 905 changes came in that hurt the uh paladin mana and also we saw nixie playing unholy when they tried it out which i don't think is as good in general so ah, i don't know they have that as an option they're not going for it they're going to go with the ret warrior once again but i i do worry for them in this series if this is the only thing they're going to want to run do, do you guys yeah. feel like we're seeing a lot of this i mean there's a lot of like ah, oh, that you know from, from you guys are saying just in a lot of these series here for the circuit that there's a lot of situations where there's like a comp that would do significantly better and we're seeing these teams not swap off to that. Do you feel like that's indicative of, of like how much pressure that these teams are really feeling? I mean, there's, you know, Waz was saying it when we were interviewing him, they really, these teams don't have a lot of second chances and it just seems like we're not seeing as much risk taking from these teams here. Uh, I definitely think, I mean, the pressure is really high. That's one of the things uh, that, you know, you have to consider, like, how comfortable are you playing those alts? But I also think that, you know, some of these teams, uh, they've, they've really limited themselves in their practice, you know? Like, I'm thinking Integrity Damp as well was a team that we said, oh, well, what if Warwick goes Demo? And they ended up swapping to the BM Hunter and it looked good. Um, but uh, I think it just comes down to some of these uh, teams, they just run that one comp and they just try to run it into everything. Uh, you know, ad hoc gaming is like that. Kiwana gaming is pretty much like that. And uh, of course, Tegrity Damp as well. Three teams so we don't see swap their comp, but big damage coming in on Takara here. Combustion gets ripped out immediately. And now here comes the counter attack. There comes the judgment there from Kara. Not gonna be doing too much there. And now that he's done that, he can't really do too much more. So he's gonna go back and try to get back on his target. But and it's going to be difficult for him. They might need to trade out the Earthen Wall Totem. They're going to use it right there. And now Kara's still taking a lot of damage. Time to dispel them. Still good pressure here from Tessia. Now full hammer justice on the chest. Stormbolt onto Zuniaki. Zuniaki trinkets out. Doesn't have a fade though. This could be a scary situation. But look at him. He's playing Ooh. a Void of Shadow Priest. Teleports back to his side of the map. Chess out of crowd control. Should be able to keep Zuni alive here. A little bit scary. They trade out the sacrifice there just to respond to the damage. Full sheep secured. Big damage here onto Kara. This could be a trinket from Tana or a divine shield. And it's going to be the divine shield right there. So early on, a master spell slips through as well. Very threatening from both sides, honestly. The close quarters is going to allow Kara and Nerdish to connect a lot more often, but Method EU are going toe for toe here. Uh, and really putting it to them, scaring Kara, getting Divine Shield. It's not available for four minutes to immune incoming damage. They're trying to get after Theisha here. Zuniaki's moving forward on Tana. Maybe trying to bait some cooldowns here like a Tremor Totem. Kill the Tremor Totem, then go for a Psychic Scream. Zuniaki gets Earth grabbed. He's not able to move. Kara pulls back to the pillar. He is susceptible to death basically at this point without Divine Shield, so he's going to line a sight here. Nerd Rage gets swapped to for a moment, tanking up some damage in defensive stance, waiting for Kara. And Kara is still reluctant to leave the pillar here. Doesn't want to cut the apron, apron strings of the Restoration Shaman just yet. Uh, as if he overextends into combustion, he's likely to die. Tana going to go for a Fleshcraft combined with the Spirit Walker's Grace. Attempting to immune an incoming Dragon's Breath, but doesn't actually end up finding it. is just going to pull back and away, play it patiently. Power Infusion's coming up in four seconds. This is going to be a huge hit of damage on Kara. I can already tell Method you are waiting for that perfect setup. They absolutely want to erase 
Kara when they go after him here in a moment, and it could happen at any second. Nice. The moment Deja is in a storm bolt and now pummeled. They're delaying it as long as possible, but as soon as that trigger gets pulled, it could just be right now. Combustion, power infusion, big damage as Kara ready for it. Trading out the Shield of Vengeance with an instant Sanctuary on that Trinket as well. Allows him to stabilize somewhat through this aggression, recovering with some Word of Glory and healing streams in the backline, but now Tan is in a stun. Kara still has to heal himself up. Kara def definitely dealt with that expertly. That was a lot of coordinated damage from Method EU, and Kara was ready. Yeah, definitely. I mean, at this point, Kara has to be ready because if he slips up even for a second, or if he miscalculates even for a second, the damage incoming, he's just going to get evaporated like we saw on the Grand Arena. And that is the difficulty for Kiwana Gaming. They have to survive these one-shots. There is a win condition for them. Their consistent damage is high enough where they can out mana and potentially drop someone. Of course, the Retribution Paladin has a lot of burst damage as well. So if Kara gets lucky with his Divine Toll, he can kind of turn it around. But with how safe Zuniaki and uh, Tessia are playing, it makes it really, really difficult. In the past, we'd see the Shadow Priest Mage kind of go for crowd control, push in, uh, overextend their position, and that's where the Warrior Ret could really take advantage. But look at this, Kara, he's basically, he's playing a ranged Ret Paladin right now. <laughs> he basically just divine tolling from far away, throwing in judgments when he can. Uh, he's trying to be a caster in this matchup, but it's just not a, a great matchup for the Retribution Paladin. Basically, outside of his Avenging Wrath, he's going to be very afraid to make a trade. Chaz sitting down to completely reset his mana before Dampening kicks in. That is exactly what you want to see. Kara trying to get some pressure with that, but forced to run away once again. Big combustion! And there's still no Divine Shield for a few more seconds, but it looks like Kara will be able to hold on. But just close call after close call. Scary moment after scary moment. Quanta Gaming's in a lot of trouble. Yeah, it really feels like Kiwana Gaming are just in a permanent uphill battle here. They're just trying to climb Mount Everest. And uh, at the top, there's just a combustion waiting for them. And you guys see here, uh, Chaz finally getting a big heal there onto Tessia. Tessia finally taking a little bit of damage there. Full Psychic Scream onto Tana. Do they have a Polymorph to combo it with? It does not look like uh, they have that. They don't have the DR maybe. Uh, Zuni still taking a little bit of damage here. He needs to be careful. Kara has the wings up and we know what can happen if a wreck connects on you with those wings. Is the most, uh, this is the most dangerous time to be playing as the wreck. And there's a Sky Fury behind that pillar as well. So that Sky Fury, if Kara gets any crits, is really going to make them hurt. But that Sky Fury is now finally going to time out. Tana is going to send his Earth Elemental onto Chas. And that Earth Elemental is going to add uh, just, uh, you know, difficulties for Chas staying out of combat. Oh, nice flesh trap nice. by Tana right there. And now he's going to go for the Hex here onto Tasia. Beautifully done there. Uh, nice uh, combo. Oh, he gets mm -hmm. silenced though. Tessa can still get the Polymorph here. He's not even going to go for it. Just presses Combustion. Gets the Divine Shield there. Zuniaki might have to trade as well. He has the Greater Fade though. I cannot believe he's not trading out the Greater Fade. Full Sheep here. Potential on Kutana. And it's going to be secured. Kara just playing secondary healer at the pillar though. Yeah, Nerd Rage now getting Hammer of Justice. They're just going to do damage to whatever is out here in the open. But with the, with the support of that Red Paladin, Nerd Rage should be completely fine. Tana's going to break out of crowd Control. And now, once again, Kara and Nerd Rage have an opportunity to get aggressive here onto Tessia. Big damage potential for Tessia. Sacrifice, and it does trade there from Chaz. And now the next time that Combustion is up, there's no Divine Shield for Kara. Could be the Trinket Spirit Link. So I think Kiwana Gaming, their cooldown rotation is if Divine Shield is up during Combustion and necessary, use Divine Shield first. Second Combustion is going to be Trinket Sanctuary from Kara. And then third Combustion, if they get one in that window, is likely going to be Trinket Spirit Link Totem. And I do actually think Kiwana Gaming, if they can execute this cycle of defensive cooldowns, they'll be able to win on a small map like Hook Point here. So let's see if they can get ready. Here comes Combustion. It's available in one more second. So this is Kara's chance to save the team. He needs to be in line of sight of Tana and immediately Trinket and Sanctuary the Silence. They've stunned up Zuniaki and stunned up Dacia. They're trying to spread their pressure, but here comes the stun. That's the Trinket Sanctuary. Overlapped with the Stone Form. So maybe, maybe it's not necessary if Stone Form is available. Zuniaki slips in for a Psychic Scream. Good punish there by Zuniaki. A full Polymorph, but Kara is just easily healing through the damage here with Avenging Wrath, Word of Glory, and they manage to recover. So now Divine Shield still two minutes away. If they, if Thesia can reset uh, Combustion here before that two minute mark, it's going to be Tana who needs to get ready with that Trinket Spirit Link. Yeah, definitely need to be ready for that moment. 14% dampening at this point of the game. 
Hesia still just positioning. Look at Zuniaki though, getting bursted down. Keep in mind, there's no fade, there's no dispersion. Could be scary. Chaz Force uses a Divine Shield. Some semblance of pressure here for Kawana Gaming. And uh, Zuniaki's going to have to play very careful right now. Combustion still just being reset here by Tessia. Looking for Frost Bolts, just trying to get snares. Freedom coming in from Kara as he wants to reconnect to that Shadow Priest. Such a juicy target at this point in the game. Tessia now looking for a full Polymorph. Can he land it? Ooh, nice reflect there by Nerd Rage. And that's the danger. I mean, when you go after the Shadow Priest like this, you allow the Mage to kind of get a lot going by himself. But. Nerd Rage and Kara kind of realizing the situation. They're going to be going after the mage. The silence on Tana and Kara is just immediately behind the pillar. I think it was you said that said you want to rename him to Careful. And as careful as he's been in this matchup, he's still just constantly under fire. Good interrupt there by Thessia. This is the combustion. Big damage once again, but doesn't look like they have any crowd control for the moment. Chaz actually sat down for a drink during that combustion, so while his team was getting aggressive, he was able to recover his mana. And now I'd say things are looking pretty good here. The only thing that scares me is Zunyaki with no defensive cooldowns going to be very susceptible. Hammer of Justice coming in from Kara. They're looking to make a push. If there's any time for them to win the game, this could be it. Zunyaki's got the dispersion, does not want to greet it, and he will trade it out. Method he used, stay in the game. Nicely done. And now they have that window. There's only going to be the fade that they have to worry about from Zuniaki here. If they can get that double stun onto Chaz, onto Zuni, they can win the game here. And it's going to come down to doing that before that uh, trinket comes back up for Chaz. He could save the day if he has it. And here we go. Full Storm Bolt. Where's the Hammer of Justice? There's the Hammer of Justice. Where's the damage? Range damage coming in from Kara. Zuniaki trades out the greater fade. He's going for a heal there. Does fade cast, but no... Uh, no cigar there for Zuniaki, but he does have the Vampiric Embrace and nice jukes there as well. I think he juked our, our, our camera person as well there and myself uh, with that Void Elf Ratio. Very nice. And uh, that was a very scary situation, but now Jazz can trinket and make a trade next time uh, they find themselves in that situation. But he gets wind cheered. He can't trinket a wind cheer. Zuniaki's still very, very low here. Almost going down, and he will go down. Unbelievable. Kuwana Gaming, and I think achievement unlocked. Defeating Shadow Priest Mage as Red Warrior. I think this is the first time we actually see it happen. Unbelievable. They had the smallest window there. Chaz gets wind cheered, and they are able to get the win there. But that was a sweaty game for them. Yeah. Uh, the problem is that achievement unlocks Tolveron Arena. So. Heroic <laughs> <laughs> mode, Tolveron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is slowly leveling up in the series, but I mean that's a good sign for Kawana Gaming. There's there's moments of pressure. They managed to hold on and survive all those burst windows. It's just such a volatile matchup. I mean they can lose at any moment, but if things go their way, there's not enough damage from Method, then they can find themselves in this situation where you have enough time uptime on Zuniaki to slowly force out those cooldowns and then eventually uh, come out with a win. And you can just see Chaz, he's got really nothing left to work with. We're at like 25% dampening almost 10 minutes into the game of just surviving, surviving, surviving. And eventually just Method EU, they run out of answers. And I mean, hats off to Quanta Gaming for actually pulling out a win with this one. Yeah, this is actually unbelievable. Here, that, that wind shear right there on the chest. Nice uh, polymorph spam, but uh, a little bit on the wrong guy there. I guess uh, Tessia just wanted to try to shut down some of that range damage from the rat, but uh, still have Nerd Rage uh, all over Zinni there with those executes. And uh, yeah, like you said, uh, that that win is going to unlock most likely a Tolveron or a toothpick pillars or something big here. So uh, it's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be a problem what, <laughs> for sure. Is that what we're calling I don't know if we, domain now? I think yeah. we I think we should not. Zika's <laughs> just making up all sorts of terms on the desk here. Uh, oh, it, we, <laughs> oh, it was mean. actually Sid who came up with that term. <laughs> no, no. It doesn't seem very Yeah, yeah, but he referred to, be to it as Toothpick Pillar Map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, fair enough. But uh, yeah, I feel like Imperium Domain, Tolveron Arena, uh, likely going to be Astromain's Fall. Also, you know, not a bad option. Uh, likely going to be, you know, the next kind of stomping ground. Um, and we'll have to see. Kwanda Gaming, they did it on the small map. Can they repeat that success on the large map? It's going to be a lot harder for them. But uh, if they can, uh, first of all, if they can, it's good for them. But Second of all, if they can, that's really bad for Method. Like, if this swing match, should we see Kawana Gaming actually win, then this could be the series. I mean, if Method doesn't win this series, I feel like their chances of actually making it into that top four 
have almost vanished. So really mm -hmm. stressful for them. Yeah, I mean, it, you could almost say like this next game it really determines the, the fate of Method EU for <laughs> the rest of this circuit here. If you really wanted to add on the drama, like the, you know, really <laughs> dramat dramatize it. Yeah, you definitely. Dram I mean, dramatize. Yeah, there we go. Dramatize? Is, it? <laughs> Is that even right? I don't know. Dramatize. Let's stop talking about it. I'm sure we're being corrected <laughs> in chat right now, but <laughs> continue. Oh, there's no doubt about that. But uh, yeah, if you really wanted to, you know, up the ante for this one, yeah, that could be. I mean, if they lose the swing match, all of a sudden the series gets a lot harder for them. And if they lose the series, making it into top four definitely gets really, really difficult. So a lot on the line for them in each and every one of these games. And keep in mind, in terms of tiebreakers, your win-loss record is really important too. So winning a series 3-0, winning a series 3-1 is going to help you in those tiebreaker situations. Whereas if oh! every single one of your series is really close, it becomes scary. All right, well, Kiwana Gaming, they are going to be switching it up. That actually startled me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, what? What happened? <laughs> I don't know. I got, I got excited. Uh, I just, uh, you know, I, I go, uh, me and Nixie, we go way back. You know, I used to compete against this guy in, in Canada. He was a holy pilot in back then. So, uh, you know, Nixie definitely been all over the world. And now we're going to see him here in the sands of Tolvir, trying to make something happen with that red road. And I, I'm not sure, Scooby. What do you think? I don't know. I I, I feel like I, I don't know. The assassination rogue it, it has a lot of burst. I, I'd say the one problem for me with the assassination rogue is I don't think it's super good into the holy paladin. I feel like holy paladins in general have quite a few options. So blind picking it on such a large map. I mean maybe they really feel hopeless in the warrior matchup, so they just want to try anything else. Um, but I, I still think this is going to be a really, really difficult matchup for them, even with that Rogue. But we have seen that kind of one-shot potential Nixie has, and he can kind of turn around this matchup. You know, Method EU is the team that's looking to blow someone up with the Combustion. Now, all of a sudden, that Vendetta becomes the scariest cooldown in the game, and uh, Method EU, they're going to respond with the Shadow Priest, Fire Mage, Paladin. Kind of expected. Um, I I'm curious to see how this one does play out. Yeah, I am as well. This series could very well end up here in a game number five. If Method U wins this map on Tolveron, we could potentially expect Kiwana Gaming to bring that back to another small map, as we did see on Hookpoint. It's just going to go back and forth. And we said this a couple of matches earlier, winning the blind lock, on, winning the first game on the Grand is just so, so crucial in matches such as these, because if you're winning that first one and you are a team, a two teams that are very closely uh, matched against each other, very head to head, it's going to more than likely than not, I, I wish we could get like some statistical data on that. Gonna go to the team that won that first map. So this is very, very important here for Kiwana Gaming if they want to uh, put themselves in a good spot here in this series for the rest of these games. But Method EU, I mean, their double caster composition on Tolveron Arena, something we've seen so, so often here, Super Tease. So Kiwana Gaming definitely has it out for him, them in a game number three here. Yeah, they just, uh, just make efficient trades. Blessing and Protection on Vendetta, Sacrifice on Avenging Wrath, um, use the Medallions, try to like pre-alter time occasionally, Greater Fade. As long as they make the trades on the burst damage, I think that Method EU should be able to win this matchup. But at the same time, the damage can be quite high. Uh, and if you don't know what the cooldowns look like or you're not ready for them uh, against Rets or Assassination Rogues, I believe he's playing Assassination. I got something on top of the icon yep. I can't see. I'm assuming that he's Assassination. Yep. Um, you can just get blasted out of the game. So, that's it. You better have done their homework uh, for these specializations. You don't. You don't fight this combination very much. Also, I hope Zuni has his uh, keybinds sorted this time because <laughs> last time we saw Ouch. them here at Tolvaron, that they were uh, like hiding the, the entire time. Zuni's a. Uh, and he's setting up his keybinds mid-match. So hopefully they don't have that uh, happen again here and they can pull off this victory and put themselves on match point for this map. But seems like, I'm not sure. I haven't been, I haven't heard a word from an admin yet, but I think given the time that we're taking this to get set up here, get these players in the game, we may have a, a delay on our hands here, which means either of these teams right now <laughs> is feeling a little bit nervous heading into this match. Waz is probably sitting there right now just coaching. Okay, so when he uses Vendetta and vanishes, that's when you got to trade the cooldowns, okay? So I think Coach Waz right now really just, you know, giving an Assassination Rogue 101 course to his team. Yeah. Make sure they understand the scary moments. Yeah, Coach Waz, he's just walking around right now with a, with a big bath in his hand, just 
All right, <laughs> Zuni, let me see. All right, the binds are looking good. Okay, <laughs> Tessia. Uh-huh. Oh, you're the right covenant. Okay, Chess. All right. But yeah, uh, like no, I, <laughs> I, I, I think the only way Method loses here, is, so th there's, there's two ways they lose. Number one, okay. they don't press their cooldowns and they get one shot by either the Red or the Assassination Rogue, most likely happening to Zuni. Number two, they get interrupted and die in a kick, also most likely happening to Zuni. If neither of those two things happen, I think Method EU wins this one. And I don't see this game going for like a super long time. I think if Kawana are just like <laughs> hugging the pillar and being super defensive, they're just going to slowly rot down, you know? Yeah. Yeah, certainly, certainly a tough position to be in here, but we, I mean, we can see Kawana Gaming definitely have a chance here bringing out this composition, so we'll have to see what these guys can do. Maybe they can pull this off, but it's kind of, it seems like it's up to Method EU. Just, it seems like as long, correct me if I'm wrong, as long as they don't make a stake, mistake here in this game on Tolveron, it's going to be their match win here. Their game win on Tolveron. Yeah, this is Method's uh, game to lose, if you look at it that way. Okay. All right, well, Method EU, hopefully they're not going to make a mistake. Hopefully we've got the the right covenants. We've got the Zuni's got all his keybinds set up. And if they've got that, it should be their victory here. Game number three, Kuwana Gaming. All eyes on them at the moment, though. Can they turn this one around in their favor? Can they beat Method EU on this composition on Tolveran Arena? It's game number three. Method EU versus Kuwana Gaming. All right. Kawana Gaming breaking out the Ret Rogue Discipline Priest. Not a very common composition, and you can really tell that they're getting desperate here, pulling out all the stops. These two specializations, really all three of them, can add a lot of burst damage, though, so if Method EU aren't ready or prepared, they could lose this. If that is the case, Kawana Gaming could take the whole thing. They need to be ready. Nixie is just sprinted in, gets a sap on Zuniaki, but gets Frost Nova out of stealth, not able to connect onto Thessia and won't get a Garot Silence and loses out on a lot of damage. Not the best start here for Kawana Gaming as Kara retreats back to the pillar, trying to line a sight. They've left Nixie alone, though, in midfield. They could swap. They're holding out for now. Zunyaki stunned up. Akars and a polymorph. He can't help during the kidney shot. And Tana's trying to run away from Tessia. We see a pre-shadower death from Tana, trying to anticipate the Dragon's Breath, but not able to land it anyways. Nixie looks to be the target at the moment. It's going to be a lot less durable <laughs> than that warrior that they had earlier. And we see a double psychic scream trying to set up and punish the dispel. Nixie immediately trinkets and uses faint along with rapture powered shields. It looks like they should be durable enough to tank through the first wave of combustion. Chaz now stunned up. Tessia taking some damage. Zuniaki rotted down to half as well. They're going for a, bit, a little bit of a split tactic. Trying to kind of make Method EU choke a little bit by splitting their damage and not making it certain to what strategy they're committed to. But the more time they fish for these types of plays, the longer Method EU has to really set up and close it out. Yeah, there is a full polymorph on Tana. Kara actually playing Repentance gets shut down by a double Dragon's Breath there. But basically the closest wizard strategy, super effective on this map, where if Tessia pushes in, pushes in, then it's going to be up to Nixie and Kara to switch their damage and get some pressure onto him. If Zuniaki pushes in, then he's going to be the main target in the match. So uh, really, really important that you just kind of deny whatever one of these casters is going to be going after your healer, is going to be going for that crowd control. Um, and that's likely what we're going to be seeing. Kara doesn't want to overextend in the match. They could be playing this one out for a, a mana victory. Right now, Tana does have have the mana lead, but things things do still get really, really scary. Nixie right now still just kind of being a little bit tankier than I thought he would, in all honesty. He doesn't get dispelled there out of the Hammer of Justice, but yeah, Nixie now with Powered Barrier should be able to hold on, and I, I just feel like uh, if Nixie uh, and Kara uh, can stay on a target, things get really, really scary. That was big burst coming in. Nixie still has not used Vendetta one time in this game. I kind of wonder if he should just kind of trade it out sooner, or maybe he just wants to hold on to it so it's always a threat in the back of the mind of Zuniaki and Tessia. Uh, if you can get them to be greedy with their defensive cooldowns, you might be able to just surprise win with the Retribution Paladin Burst. Uh, however, if they know Vendetta's off cooldown, they're not going to be nearly as afraid. So a bit of a mind game there between Kawana Gaming and Method EU. Nixie uh, always has that kind of one-shot available. It just depends on when he's going to actually use it.
Yeah, and I think a good time to use it would be right now with a smoke bomb. Tessie has no trinket, so I really think that that's gonna be the next target of choice here. They could go after Zuni. He will just trade out the dispersion though if they do. So I would really like to see them just dot up. Oh, big damage onto Kara here right now. Big heal though with that radiance from Tana, but that is going to chunk his mana bar. The kidney shot being used here onto Zuniaki now. Zuniaki not really trading anything. He takes a big chunk of damage right there, and that was the dispersion. So now there's two targets you can go after if you're Nixie. You just you have like a an entire table here full of dinner. Who do you want? What do you want to eat? You want the mage, kidney shot, smoke bomb, vendetta. Right now would be a good time to do it. Uh, they're just okay. They get the life grip, so now they won't even need to trade out the smoke bomb potentially. Actually, Shaz is going to sacrifice if they don't. So. Uh, they just keep a, they just keep up their pressure. They're not really pulling the trigger onto anybody here. I, I really would have expected them to just kidney smoke bomb, get the ice block of Tessia, uh, or kidney uh, Zuniaki here. But I don't know if he has his human racial or not. And if they do it on the Zuniaki, I feel like there's too many answers. If he, if he just uh, trinkets and then uses fade, it's like basically game over uh, for them. Two minutes left until that next vendetta comes out. So. Uh, I really think you have to be careful using it on the Zuni. Uh, I would much rather see it on Tessia, but he has his trinket coming back up now, so uh, I feel like they're losing that opportunity. And now instead, it's going to be Kara going out on the back foot here. Tana's mana still looking pretty good, but uh, it's going to be very telegraphed now what they want to do on the side of the Scooby Doo clean. Oh, smoke bomb. Oh, smoke bomb. Zuniaki just greater fades and walks out of it. However, now no dispersion, no greater fade. They could pull the trigger on a vendetta at any moment here. 14 seconds still left. They need cow control on Chaz, though, to remove the option of sacrifice for free. Nixie taking a beating at the moment. Chaz into the stun. Here comes a vendetta. Instant bop from Chaz. He's not going to allow that vendetta to get any value. And Nixie just sat on that for four and a half minutes just to get Trinket Bob out of the way. So maybe a bit devastating. Perhaps he's going to look to more rotationally press it moving into the future. Zuniaki appears to still be the target stunned up on the power infusion. Repentance being casted by Kara. An interesting adaptation in terms of talents and crowd control. Really trying to mix it up there. At least showing potential with this composition despite it being such an abysmal map. Kara's on the run trying to get back behind the box while Tana's in a polymorph. Nixie could get swapped to. Mine games out from Zuniaki, devouring plague, Kara dispelling it, trying to help out with some flash of light in the back line, just healing up the rogue while Tana gets through a polymorph and then heals up Kara, looking to connect onto Tessia. Chaz with no medallion, they grip Tessia back into midfield. Big divine Whoa. tool crit there. What? Massive damage. They got Whoa. the cauterize off the back of that final reckoning. Huge damage. The only real problem right now for Kiwana Gaming is that Tana's mana is just so dire. It is true, but they have a lot of pressure. Zudiaki might just get dropped. There's a dispersion. There's a greater fate available. But, I mean, the, the damage that Kara and Nixie are able to put out is quite surprising. Kara eating out of, or eating a lot of those counter spells here in this match with that Repentance. So doing a good job there, looking for the crowd control, and at the very least, baiting out the interrupt from Teza, allowing Tana to get out basically all the casts he needs to. I do think at some point Tana's going to have to sit down for a drink Chaz, with his positioning and with kind of the positioning of the map, uh, it's allowed him to sit down and recover his mana in a few moments where uh, Tana really hasn't had that luxury as he's constantly having to heal overextended targets. Right now, sitting down for a drink, Kara throwing in some heals. Nice job there by Tessia with his Flame Strike, shutting down that drink, keeping Tana in combat. Now, actually, an Ice Block forced out. And keep in mind, Nixie has got that Vendetta rotating back up. This is a great opportunity for Kiwana Gaming. Yeah, and uh, he has... Uh... I think a great target in that mage. No trinket for Tessia. No smoke bomb though for uh, Nixie. Big pressure coming out here. Tana gets counterspelled. Still decent pressure there onto Kara, but looks like Kara is going to be A-OK -okay right now. He's just ducking back to his pillar for a second here. Tana's going to trade out the powered barrier right there. Nixie's just gonna go into it for cover. Now going after uh, Zuni. That was the combustion of Tessia. Still a lot of pressure here onto uh, Kara, but Tana still has a little bit of mana to work with. He still has his pain suppression as well. Kidney shot, both of them connecting over onto Zuni. Zuniaki and Chaz is going to have to power out some heals. Now they're going to just attack whoever the closest wizard is. This could be an opportunity for Tana potentially to sit down for a drink. If they want to drag the fight closer to their side, it's definitely an opportunity. But here comes the mind games onto Kara. He gets the dispel. Defensive smoke bomb coming out from uh, Nixie right there as well. Nicely done. And I mean, anytime they pull back like this, it, in my opinion, Tana should just go look for drinks and they should just attack Tessia if he tries to stop it. Zuni is not going to be able to really do too much if he's that far away as a Shadow Priest. So 
Uh, I really think they should be playing around the map a little bit more. Uh, right now, mana somewhat even between these two healers. And I mean, if they pull the trigger on that Vendetta onto Tessia, they could easily just kill him. But they, again, they did that defensive smoke bomb. I really don't like Nixie's smoke bomb usage so far this game. I feel like they actually could have set up a kill with that smoke yeah. bomb. All they had to do was just get Tessia's trinket and then just pop Vendetta. Now, instead, they, they use Vendetta onto Zuni net them the dispersion which isn't too bad but uh, Zuni still gonna have some uh, defense to rotate around there with Chaz whereas Tessia didn't have his ice book or his cauterize okay looks like both healers are trying to drink at the moment potentially resetting their mana at eight minutes in 20 percent dampening Tana gets clipped by a flame strike Chaz has to stop his own drink as Inuyaki is sapped and Tessia is in a three versus one dangerous oh. situation. Kara gets stunned up. Nice interception, but a full repentance over onto Chaz. Master Spell snipes it out. Mind Dreams out from Zuniaki, trying to counter pressure Kara and Nixie away. However, Tana has mana now. Rapture is rolling. Big power word shields coming out onto the whole team, trying to stay aggressive. Tana's going in for a door. Shadow Psychic Scream gets intercepted by Tessia. Dragon's Breath into Ring of Frost. Doesn't land the Ring of Frost. Can Tana get the Shadow of Death? Tessia fakes the Shadow of Death, lands the full primer, but Zuniaki's getting blasted. Could he go down here? Sacrifice trades for Chaz. Now Nixie and Kara need to get ready. Kara trinketing out, trying to recover, hitting a bit of damage on that redirection to Chaz as well. But Avenging Wrath is up. Chaz should be able to recover through this despite the 24% dampening. It will cost him basically the remainder of his mana though. So I am very curious to see if Kara and Nixie get aggressive here. They're trying to fish for repentance. They're not finding it. Shield of Vengeance. We see an attempted play here by Carr to try and get aggressive on Suniaki in the kidney shot. Six seconds until his dispersion is off cooldown. Chaz is just wrapping around the corner, trying to heal on fumes at this point, but no cloak of shadows for the rogue is desperation here. Kawana Gaming need to get ready. Tana needs to protect his rogue, and he's trying to avoid a polymorph, faking out Tessia's polymorph with that shadow of death, now pulling away. And we see Kara charging in to stop Chaz from drinking. They could still win this on mana if they can stay in the fight. Chaz is repositioning across the midfield. Tana snipes him out with a solace, keeping him in combat. But Nixie is getting blasted down by the combustion. Good trade by Tana with the pain suppression. Tana's Shadow Fiend is coming up in five seconds. That's a lot of damage as well as mana regeneration that could allow Tana to come back into the fight. Method you need to stop the Shadow Fiend from getting value here as he's likely to press it off of cooldown. He gets Psychic Screamed at the moment. Kara gets stunned up. He can't use the Sanctuary. This is desperation. Kara Divine Shields, Master Spell. Clutches out, but that Tessia is so low. There's no mana left on Chaz, and anyone could go down at this point. Oh, they certainly could. They just need uptime on Tessia. He's got the ice block. He's got the cauterize available as well very shortly. But look at Nixie. He almost has his uh, Cloak of Shadows. He's got Vanish, Vendetta, lots of cooldowns to work with. I, I really feel like Kawana Gaming, they could win this one. This is such an important match. This is the swing match we were talking about. Tessia into a kidney shot, and ice block is forced out. And now there's no there's no answer for Vendetta. I don't think there's a, there is a blessing of protection, so Chaz is going to have to do a really good job with that one. Sitting a full sap right now. Good control coming in from Nixie, but that Vendetta is such a horrifying cooldown. If Tana can get there to dispel it, and all of a sudden Tessia is going to be in a world of trouble. 36% dampening. This game is just increasingly becoming more and more unstable. I don't know, Kawana Gaming, it's not looking Combust. too bad, but a silence comes in, big combustion! Kara has to survive this, but after this, this is an opportunity, Kawana Gaming, they do survive the combustion, oh, a blind actually, oh. they get the, they get it! They get the blessing of protection, this is so big! Tessia, I, I think Tessia could go down, if they can recover, if Kara can get on target, if we get the Vendetta onto the mage, I, I really feel He's like dead. Dixie could just close the game out by himself. Tessa is dead, that's it. He's opening with Vanish with 100% crit. Here comes the Vendetta, potentially. If Kara can just stabilize a little bit and connect the damage, Nixie popping the Cloak of Shadows there. No Vendetta still committed here by Nixie. What is he waiting for? There's a Forbearance. There's a second buff coming up here, Nixie. And uh, there we go. There's the Vendetta now. Big damage here onto Tessia. No Blessing of Protection available. Tana is completely out of mana. And Kara doesn't have his Divine Shield. They don't really have too much to work with. He can Trinket and Dispel a Sanctuary. There is the Power Word Barrier. Chaz looking for the drinks here. If the melees can get the uptime, if they can get the pressure here in the midfield, it's going to mean that Chaz will have to stop drinking and Tana can drink. So uh, this 2v2 is very, very important here. You can see Tana on the corner there. Is he drinking? He is getting a little bit of mana. Tessia now making his way over there. But now they are completely separated. Dragon's Breath onto Tana into full sheep. He's going to have no way out of this. They're actually oh, going after swap. Tana. Here comes the swap. Big damage there. And they got a little bit isolated there towards the end, but Kawana Gaming, they they could have easily won that game. I feel like if they just popped that a little bit earlier, they got aggressive a little bit earlier there at the end. 
I, I feel like this was a game that they could have won. And if they win this game, I mean, that's the swing match. The Wana are actually playing out of their minds to even be in that situation. Yeah, they certainly are looking pretty good in that last game. Two to one, though, right now. Method EU winning the map here on Tolveron. And we can see that replay right here. Yeah, so look at the swap. No pain suppression, no medallion on Tana. Those are the two cooldowns that a Discipline Priest can use to protect themselves. So Method EU saw that weakness. They're like, all right, Nixie, Kara, you're going to go just run around the pillar over there. It's like, okay, go have fun with each other. You see that Discipline Priest to your left that's all alone, Tana? Yeah, we're actually, we want to kill him. So yeah, you guys go have fun over there. Tessia is going to sneak over on top of Tana. Chaz is going to sneak over. They've scared Kara and Nixie away. And they're like, oh, hi, Tana. You're all alone uh, over uh, here. Uh -oh. We don't have anything for this. <laughs> Goodbye. That's so that's Method EU just completely isolate Tana, and I mean, uh, Ret Rogue would have had if it weren't for those meddling Method players. Ah, <laughs> nice one. That was good. Cause, cause I love, my favorite part. Yeah, my favorite part of that replay is the absolute panic in, in Nixie and Kara's character when Hammer of <laughs> Justice goes out on his end. They're like, uh oh, we gotta go. Oh, it's too, late, too little, too late. Oh. Uh, All right. I, honestly, I, I feel like that wasn't a bad pick. On the big map, I'd actually that matchup seemed better uh, to me than the Warrior Retribution Paladin, or at least close to it. So. Uh, I feel like that wasn't a bad experiment whatsoever, but Method EU, they're going to be happy to pick up that win. Now 2-1 and one in this series. They just need one more. They're on match point. And uh, my, my, my question is, where are we going to go? Likely a small map, I'd say. So like Dalaran Sewers, something like that. And then uh, probably we see the Warrior. Although I wouldn't even mind seeing the Rogue once again, in all honesty. Do you think that might be a better option for them if they can get like a, just a little bit more time against this team on on the Red Rogue? And that way, if they do lose this next game, or if they do win this next game, excuse me, and then Method EU chooses a larger map, they just have a little bit more time in, with this matchup uh, to get a, potentially a win once it's Method EU's map choice again. I mean, I mean, I mean that question makes it, sense. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just thinking about yeah. it. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. I'm just thinking about it. I, 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 I really kind of feel like the Red Rogue, even on a smaller map, just feels better than a Warrior Red. But yeah. I think Warrior Red is the comp that they've ran so much. You know, it's their like they are so good at it too. That I feel like I can kind of understand why you would pick it. But if the Red Rogue is that competitive on Tolvir, I feel like picking it on a small map kind of does make sense. So yeah, I don't know. I kind of want to see the Red Rogue to be honest. But we're probably not going to see it. I mean, if I was on Kawana, I probably would go with the Red Warrior, the thing that actually won me the game, and the thing that I'm most comfortable with. But uh, as a, like a spectator, I want to see the Red Rogue again, because I do feel like uh, if they were as good at the Red Rogue as they are with the Warrior Red, I think they actually could be winning this entire series here uh, just with the Red Rogue. What do you think the yeah. logic is? Like, What do you think the logic is of Discipline Priest versus Resto Shaman? Because I feel like a Resto Shaman could be good on the small map with the Rogue. Assassination, Red Rogue. Like, what are they missing out on? A healer that dies. He double Dispel? <laughs> yeah, they, 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 he, he was playing Double Dispel. Yeah, Double Dispel seems really, really important if he was playing it. No, he wasn't. He wasn't? He wasn't, okay. Oh, no, he yeah. wasn't. Yeah, Hot right. Steel, Trinity, and Ultimate Radiance. I swear I saw him dispel mind games and a hammer of justice, but maybe he just trinketed it. That's what I thought I saw too. But yeah. I guess he's not playing it. I mean, it would make sense to play the double dispel because they're losing in like these really weird moments where dispels on cooldown, they go for a hammer of justice and just try to one shot. But uh, yeah, I, I feel like, yeah, I'm curious to see what Kiwana Gaming uh, does go with. They went to black or cold, so smaller map, kind of as anticipated, method to you. There's really no reason for them to get off this composition. It's really good into Cleves, and Kiwana Gaming is basically exclusively uh, a Cleve team uh, at this point. So um, I, I really wonder if they have anything else. I wonder if the, does anyone play Hunter for Kiwana Gaming? Kara can play it. Yeah. He has in the past. What do you want to see? BM Hunter could be good. With, with BM Hunter with Warrior, the... like KFC? I don't know. BM Hunter something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. You just want to see Nixie. the BM, more BM on second period. <laughs> I don't think this team can yeah. play without a ret. 
I feel like really? it's just going to be a really not so feels good man game if they play without a red paladin. <laughs> uh, I think they're debating whether or not they want to play warrior right now based off how well that last game went. Um, and it, in answer to your question, I, I think even they don't know 100% because it's experience versus potential, but it's kind of a oh, practice. Ah, and they're actually going to flip aha. in the shaman instead of the priest. Uh, they're going to get um, more disruption from the shaman, better mana. I think they're going to just try and dampen. They're actually yeah. going to run shaman version of this and just rely on dampening uh, instead of bringing in a disciplined priest for more burst damage. So an interesting adaptation. Not it might work. I I feel like Nixie's really vulnerable uh, with this composition specifically. If they get cross crowd control, there's no berserker rage on those double psychic screams. So uh, it might work. I, I like the theory crafting of it. It's just it, method. You are playing a composition that they're known for playing for a long time, and it's a very strong composition at the moment. So when you see uh, this come out, Ret Warrior or, or sorry, Ret Rogue coming out. Uh, you kind of just are already in the court of certainty that method of you are going to be able to close it out. Yeah, and also if you look at the history between these two teams, Method has won their last three series against Kwana. They've only dropped two games against this team. So this was going to be a tough one from the beginning. Kwana Gaming, though, trying out these new compositions very close for the last game. So maybe this little bit of a, a switch here with Kwana Gaming uh, could be the ticket here for them to win it against uh, Method EU on Black or Cold. They were pretty close last time, so maybe this, um, this map will be the ticket for these guys. That could be huge, huge victory for them, regardless of the result of this series. This is, um, I feel like this is spelling pretty good for Kiwana Gaming so far. Yeah, yeah I, uh -huh. I mean, pretty good. That was a weird phrase of the sentence, but yeah, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> I, I feel like Nixie and Kara, I mean, they've been playing together for such a long time. Um, they actually ended up winning BlizzCon together. So they have a lot of experience um, in terms of like rotating their defensive and offensive cooldowns you would expect. Um, so I, I feel like they can definitely go toe to toe in terms of the experience of method. And I, I, I don't know, I, I, I kind of becoming more and more of a believer of the assassination retribution paladin on paper. It feels like the, the, the mage shadow priest should win, but they had good pressure. They managed to survive a really, really long time. If they can win on mana, especially on the smaller map, it's going to become a lot more difficult for Method EU to actually escape, kite, and get away, which is an opportunity to deny drinks from Chaz. So I think it's a good pick. Kwana Gaming, I like the fact that they're mixing it up because bringing in Nerd Rage, I, I think it's just it's become too obvious of a matchup. And sometimes against a comp like the Shadow Priest, Mage Paladin, you need a bit of a, a little bit of extra spice to kind of mix things up and kind of throw off the script a little bit because it seems like Method EU is kind of comfortable in that matchup. For sure. So let's see if they can best them in this upcoming game. If they can continue on here and tie this series up. It is game number four, Black or Cold. Method EU currently on the match point. Very close to closing this series out three to one, which could be very good for potentially putting Method EU back in the circuit here. All right, the gates have opened. This is kind of the matchup that we were, th you know, thinking a little bit about it. Well, uh, what what do you lose if you get rid of the priest and you get the shaman? Uh, well, you're going to lose a little bit of offense. You're going to gain, uh, you know, a healer that can uh, out mana the paladin. You get a staff onto Chaz. They're opening up here onto Zuniaki. Full bleeds, internal bleeding, big damage coming out. Uh, I believe uh, Nyx is playing Exinguate as well on that assassination round. I'm not sure. I, I see a debuff that looks like it. And they're going to go after Zuni here. They force out the sacrifice from Chaz in the openers. Not a bad start here for Kiwana Gaming. Now it is Method getting aggressive here. Big setup coming out here. Tana just going to pop that healing wave and uh, use that Spirit Walker's Grace and uh, make sure that Nixie gets topped off. They also secure a, a Hex onto Tessia, which gets trinketed. And now a Repentance onto Chaz. Kidney Shot onto Zuni. And Nixie is on that Necro Lord Rogue, so he's gonna have uh, a lot of uh, interesting abilities there, especially with that uh, serrated uh, spike that he can throw around. And can definitely get a lot of value in a matchup like this. So we'll see what they end up doing here. But so far, it looks like they're just gonna they just want to play for that mana uh, lead on the side of Kiwana Gaming, and I think it could work for them. It's up to Method really to set up these uh, these CC setups, these CC chains, and and try to get kills going. All right. Uh, curious to see how Nixie uses his smoke bomb in this game. Seemed like it was a bit questionable in the last one. 
uh, in terms of getting value. They're going to pull the trigger on a Vendetta very early, and I think that's wise. If you're planning on winning on mana, just pull out the Vendetta, get a cooldown out of the way. If they don't respond in time, you might even get a kill. So just rotationally get it. But Kara is in crowd control. The whole team is. They're desperate. They go for a defensive blind. You can tell that they're intending to win with dampening uh, and on mana when you use blind on the mage like that. However, the, the blind was effective. It negated the combustion. They're going after Zuniaki. They just got Fade. They're pushing for Disperse. They stun Chaz. This is beautiful right now. They're looking for a Repentance out of it. Counterspell fished through. Now they could get a free Hex as well. Having both Hex and Repentance could be very scary if, if they can get that onto Tessia and Chaz at the same time. Repentance onto Chaz. Tessia blinks in for Dragon's Breath, Polymorph on Titana. Two versus two. Kara's going to duck for cover in the starting room. Nixie's going to follow suit with him, but they've left Tana alone. And remember, they swapped the Tana last time they did this, so are they going to set up a swap? They're not able to get into positions. And Yaki, despite all of that, had to use Dispersion, had to use Fade once again. So the cooldowns are burning down quite rapidly for Method EU at this point. Yeah, and in Kuana Gaming, they've really managed to find a composition where they can get out that consistent pressure. That Vendetta just so powerful with that Avenging Wrath. They have two heavy hitting cooldowns. Great consistent damage as well. You can see Chaz already down to about half mana. Full Repentance does land. Nicely done there by Kara. Pressure is just doing really well. They're, they're putting out work in this game. And I mean, Kara getting bursted down, forced to trade out the Divine Shield. But that can happen. You always have to have that in the back of your mind that at any moment you can just get one shot by the Shadow Priest, Mage. Have to be very careful, but if they make the right trades, Tana, of course, he has that Gladiator's Medallion still, as well as his Spirit Link Totem, so there's still answers. Potential full Polymorph does land. Is he going to be able to get oh. it? Unfortunately, no. Nice Smoke Bomb there by Nixie, granting line of sight for Tana and uh, denying that Polymorph from Tessia. Really, really heads up play. Yeah, definitely a dampener blind, a dampener smoke bomb there coming out from Nixie. And I, I kind of like the strategy that they're doing here. Just blind Tessia when he pops a combustion. Try to get as many hexes as possible on him. Try to keep him out of the game as much as possible. And just uh, go for these attacks. Look at Chaz's mana. And uh, now we're going to see Dragon's Breath. Oh, nice fake cast there on the interrupt of Kara. But look at that. He gets wind sheared into a full hex. Now Tessia, he could trink it and go for a Dragon's Breath. Or he could just sit it, but look at him sitting in that hex. It's going to net them that dispersion of Suniaki. Also was traded, I believe, for that vendetta of Nixie. And, I mean, this, the main story of this game is the mana. You can see here, and here comes a big setup. Full sheet, but look at Nixie. Trinkets, and then goes for the Shadow Step. Vanish the Road there. Counter pressure, counter pressure. Nixie stopping the previous setup with that Smoke Bomb. Stopping this setup here with his Trinket. And now it's going to be up to Kara and to Tana to stop that next setup. Unfortunately, Kara did use his Trinket here in this exchange as well, which means that it's going to be probably Tana's Trinket on that next chain. Uh, if Unless uh, Nixie can like, pre-cloak it or something, I'm not sure. Uh, but so far, pressure's looking good. Ooh. Kara is in the starting room, stopping Chaz from drinking. Chaz did get a little bit of mana. No dispersion here for Zuniaki. Big pressure. What are they going to do here? Ring of Frost gets casted there by Tessia, trying to lock the door there to the entrance, but uh, unable to do so. Chaz was able to recover some mana, and that is one thing about this map that uh, can kind of backfire. Those rooms, uh, you can definitely make it quite difficult to enter those rooms, especially if you're uh, you know, Chaz and you're playing with a Shadow Priest and a Mage. And uh, you actually can get some drinks. So that drink is definitely going to be a setback here for Kiwana Gaming. But uh, so far, it's anybody's game. Oh, Hammer of Justice on Nixie. Tana gets the Dispel, but now into a Psychic Horror. Nixie using Fleshcraft to tank the damage. They swap the Kara. No Divine Shield. Polymer for four more seconds, three more seconds. Trinket Link. Oh, the Polymorph ends prematurely. Can they slip through without using Link here? Dragon's Breath for one second. Popping Ascendance and trying to hold on to Spirit Link. That is their last cooldown of certainty to survive, so I don't blame them for trying to hold on here, but it's match point. They can't afford any mistakes. Uh, this Method EU will take the series 3-1 to one and move on to Sunday and still keep their hopes and dreams alive of qualifying to the top four from the circuit play. They've had a devastating start. They really can't afford any mistakes, and Kiwana Gaming is throwing them a curveball, a composition that really nobody plays competitively, that Rep Paladin Rogue. and. It looked threatening in the last game. This time around, they're bringing more of a dampening-paced game with the Restoration Shaman, trying to win on mana, focusing more on defense. And right now, they're slightly ahead, uh, if that is going to be ultimately their game plan. But they really need to start getting some pressure out. They're going after Zuniaki. This is exactly what they needed. Tessia blinking in, gets intercepted with a Shadow Step Kick. Now having to retreat away. Good defense from Nixie, stopping the mage from landing a Polymorph. Kara sneaks in a Repentance, but then Nixie just auto-attacks it. That was definitely not coordinated. 
That's going to put them behind. And they actually got a Hex on the Mage at the same time. That could have been a beautiful setup here on the Zuniaki. They're still just trying to power him down with raw pressure, but now they're silenced and stunned up. They slip through with the Sanctuary, Ooh. breaking up the crowd control chain. Nice play. Another Repentance onto Chaz. Trying to kill in a three-second Repentance. Can they really get a kill here in that window? Nixie slips up for a Garrote Silence onto the Mage and Paladin. Just trying to apply pressure onto as many targets as possible. Getting that bleed damage out. Generating combo points and just swapping targets to really tax Chaz's mana. If they can get it into a position where they're attacking a target that doesn't have a beacon, they can make Chaz heal very inefficiently. And right now they've got tremendous pressure across the board. But Tessie at 30%, Zuni at 50. That Avenging Wrath just faded just in time actually to come off cooldown. Chaz is going to pop that immediately. But here comes Mind Games. Big power play. Nixie's in trouble. Pre faint on the stun, soaking a lot of that damage. Buying time for his team. Now they're recovering, getting aggressive, going after the mage while Chaz is drinking. They're likely going to have to trade a block if they're not careful. Chaz stops his drink. Tessia blinks into the room, in line of sight, trying to bait Nixie potentially into a bad position. Still slightly ahead on mana, but that was the big cooldown burst from Kawana Gaming, and we don't really see any trades of significance from Method EU for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's really good denial there by Nixie. He got a full blind on that last combustion from Tessia into a sap, and uh, I think these defensive plays are really keeping his team in the game right now. See Nixie now going over to Tessia. He's got bleed damage on both targets. Going for a Shadow Step kick. Big damage on Tessia. This could easily be the ice block. Chaz does manage to recover a little bit of mana. Tessia on the run, though, with that Blessing of Freedom. Forced to retreat. Kawana Gaming forced him back. And now Zuniaki under fire. This could be the dispersion. A full kidney shot lands with a smoke bomb. What is he going to trade? Doesn't want to greet it. Save by the light procs as well as the dispersion. Hammer of Justice on Chaz. Great crowd control. Great setup here by Kawana Gaming. But now it's them on the back foot. Trinket coming in from Kara, freeing Tana from crowd control, and it looks like they will be able to hold on, but a beautiful fear from Zuniaki sets his team up once again. Mind Games potentially going to land. Kara going to have to get out of line of sight. He gets caught to a Dragon's Breath. That's it, continuing the chase, continuing the pressure, but I think Kawana Gaming, they're able to hold on, and now it's Zuniaki once again on the run with his greater fade, and he's still low. That was a sacrifice. Method EU definitely on the back foot right now. Yeah, a lot of pressure to be had here. They're going for the Repentance. They get it onto Chas. No Trinket, no Fade, no Dispersion. That's going to be the Divine Shield of Chas. He trades out the Blessing of Protection there as well. But look at that Vendetta coming up in about five seconds here for Nixie. He could make some big things with that. I'm not sure actually what there he it blinded. Is. And there it is. Vendetta now being popped. They can't do anything about this one. No real defense here to trade. Zuni's going to take so much damage. Maybe even unhealable damage here. He's in real trouble. Big save by the Life procs. Nice defensive ring across buying a little bit of distance there between Zuni and Nixie. Now they're doing a setup onto Nixie. He trinkets out of the Hammer of Justice. He's getting aggressive. He's got the sacrifice from Kara. They got the Hammer of Justice on Chaz. And this could be the game. He bubbles for the Repentance. He gets it. Zuniaki on 1%. No dispersion for 10 seconds. And he is going to go down. And they have done it. Red Rogue, Scooby-Doo Cleave backed up by the little dog, the little shaman there, Tana, are going to take Method EU to match point, and it looks convincing. That was impressive, I mean, Going for that gamble, like knowing that divine shielding and guaranteeing the repentance was going to win the game when you're on match point, right? Like, that's not an easy decision uh, to commit the cooldown that ultimately keeps you alive in a game that's going on against one of the best teams in Europe. So that was well done by the side of Kawana Gaming. Now, Method EU, I mean, they're likely going to go to a big map. Do they play the same composition? Uh, I I, I don't know. It's not it's not looking as certain as it was uh, at the start of the series. And I, I really am worried for them if they lose this in, in terms of their own qualification potential. Yeah, I mean, there really tough. is just so much on the line for their team. But I feel like Kawana Gaming on this small map, they just they, they played this one out so expertly. Nixie did such a good job with his defensive blinds, throwing out kidney shots at the right moment. It's just a lot of consistent damage. These constant setups, Divine Shield, Repentance going out from Kara, just really turning that offense uh, around and eventually taking down Zuniaki. And, I feel like one of the things we saw from Kawana Gaming that was so important in this match is the denial of crowd control from Tessia. Anytime he went in for a Dragon's Breast Sheep, he got denied. Nixie Shadow stepped over. Car was immediately Divine Steeding over as well. And those constant crowd control denials just made it really difficult for Method DU to find pressure. I mean, one thing's for certain, we're going to be going to a larger map, which will make it easier. But I kind of wonder if Kawana Gaming locks this composition in blind, if Method DU is going to experiment a little bit. Yeah. 
I, I think they might bring in like warrior mage or something if we see it blind. Like uh, this is this is what's so interesting, right? We just expected kind of red warrior versus shadow priest mage, but now all of a sudden you see something actually take it down. Well, what do you do if your method? Do you run the same matchup and uh, you think, okay, well, a big map that's going to be enough for us to win, or do you change up the matchup completely? You bring in the professor Waz. Like, what what are you going to do here exactly? How, how would that matchup look then in your mind if we do see Method U go to Warrior Mage? How would Ret Rogue do into that? I feel like uh, Warrior Warrior Mage should have a good time against Ret Rogue. Uh, I think uh, Warriors in general are really good at shutting down Rogues. Like yeah, You're basically going to force the Rogue to go on the Warrior, always going to have Intervene uh, if they're going after the Mage and things like that. And you're also going to have just good pressure uh, on the Rogue. So. Uh, I I would see, I would like to see like some warrior base comp uh, warrior yeah warrior mage paladin probably uh, if they do swap comp uh, or maybe they just go to you know a, a really big map and they lock in the same thing and uh, map distance will be enough uh, either way though I wouldn't be that comfortable if I was a method right now. Yeah, certainly a rough place to be in if you're either of these teams. It's really coming super close here in this series. And we're going to be finding out very, very shortly what map they do decide to lock in here. And, and I just, I, there's so many options that we could be seeing here for this last matchup. It's really like, are we going to be seeing that same matchup or are they going to switch things up? And I feel like then these are the choices that really make it like, I mean, these players have got to be feeling the pressure right now. If you're either team, really, I mean, Kiwana Gaming, they're kind of on the cusp of making it into that top four. And then there's Method EU that really need to start getting these victories. And if they do want to make it to that finals. Yeah, uh, I mean, that's that's the problem. Uh, I feel like for Method right now is in general, this composition, I don't think is like, it's a, I don't think it's a one trick composition. I actually think the Assassination Rogue with the Retribution Paladin and the Shaman, it's pretty durable. You have a lot of damage, a lot of cooldowns. I don't think there's anything Method could have run that's just going to blow it out of the water. And the thing is, Method doesn't know, I would say. It's very unlikely they practice into an Assassination Rogue, Retribution Paladin Shaman as good as what Kiwana Gaming is going to be bringing. So it's super uncertain. And the thing is, um, if they can't figure it out, they don't come with the right answer or they pick wrong, then their qualification could potentially just be gone into that top four. So. Uh, they are going to be starting off with uh, Imperian Domain, and uh, I feel like for Kiwana Gaming, I really want to see them just run the exact same composition. It worked out well, and Method to you doesn't have a certain answer at this point, so uh, I think that's the move for Kiwana Gaming, but they're going to be really just taking as much time as they possibly can, as this is just such an important game. Yeah, I like that. Both we're seeing both of these teams use that full draft timer with Method EU locking in the map, using all the time uh, for the timer in Kiwana Gaming as well to pick this composition here. So Zico, you can really tell that these guys are very, very carefully choosing their compositions. But do you you, you do like this Red Rogue pick here from Kiwana, them sticking with this comp? Yes, I like it more than with the Priest. And it's for obviously for a couple of reasons. The main thing is, of course, you know, the Priest versus the Shaman. You're going to have that mana disadvantage, uh, like we saw in Tolvir. But I, I think another big thing uh, about the Shaman is just the fact that Tana is super comfortable on that Shaman. Like when we see him play on the Shaman, it's a little bit different. He's uh, pre flesh crafting, you know, Dragon's Breaths, and he's landing Hex after Hex uh, onto Tessia. And when you're a Disc Priest, sure, you add extra damage, but. It doesn't really matter. It's just pad damage, you know? Both healers are going to drink. The game is going to go deep into dampening on a large map. And uh, that scoreboard damage that the Priest did is not really going to matter. Whereas with the Shaman, getting a, a clutch purge in is really going to matter. Getting those... Uh, having that mana lead, it's really going to matter. And uh, I mean, if you looked at the replay at the end of last game as well, they were doing these blind hex setups on the mage. And that's so key as well. If you can hex the mage when he wants to pop combustion during a setup, uh, it really helps you ex uh, kind of stall the game out and kind of swap their pressure to your own. So uh, I like the Tana lock this in. And now for method, uh, they have the map for Shadow Priest Mage. So if they want to, at worst, they're going to play the same matchup, but on their map, um, but they also could play like Warrior Mage or something like that. I, I feel like they are going to go Shadow Priest Mage though with this, uh, with this map pick. Man, I mean, there's just I'm no scared. best answer in this situation. I'm, I'm scared for them as well, Ven. I'm scared. I mean, on paper, <laughs> this should win, right? You, you have the one of the biggest maps in the pool. You have Shadow Priest Mage, Paladin, and you're playing into a cleave. Like, that's basically 
That's all That's all you could really ever ask for for Method, but they just lost this matchup. Quantic Gaming is looking better and better, and uh, they seem to be on fire. I mean, they, they kind of realize what they need to do is deny the combustion setups. They're using Blind to do it. They're using Hex to do it, and they, they know their win condition. I mean, Kara... Uh, expertly, you know, using the Divine Shield to get the full Repentance, just really just nailing that crowd control to close out the game. So, um, yeah, I think Nixie has kind of showed up huge for his team. And this could be the most important match we see for Method. If they don't win this, they might not qualify into that top four, which uh, for me is completely unexpected. Uh, but Kiwana Gaming, they're just looking so good with this composition. One, I mean, one thing you I... imagine a world where we, we don't have Method EU in a finals? It would be kind of no. kind of strange. Yeah, it would be the first oh, time in, in a long time, like in years. So yeah, mm -hmm. that, would, that would definitely be crazy. What, what were you going to say, though, there, Zico? Um, well, I was going to say, I think, like... If, if we went into this game blind right now, and you're on Kiwana Gaming, and you know you're going to play on a large map, I feel like this is the matchup you wanted. So I don't know if this is a mistake on, on Methods End or not, uh, locking in the Shadow Priest Mage. I, I really feel like if you're Kiwana, the only reason why you wouldn't want to just blind lock this every single time is because you're scared of something else that's not Shadow Priest Mage. And uh, I feel like, like Ben said, they're just getting better and better in this matchup. It, it, it's starting to look more and more convincing for them, so... Uh, method, we kind of stated it earlier, they kind of have to win pretty much uh, every single game that they play now if they want to qualify, and uh, this is uh, definitely not the best situation, you're 2-2 and the enemy team has their comp, uh, so yeah, it's going to be it's gonna be scary for them. Yeah, really, really scary for them, these guys have been having such a tough time so far in the circuit here, this could be... Uh, either disaster for them or it could be the beginning of them starting to make that comeback here as we head into the rest of the games here for the european region this is cup number three we're already more than halfway at this point through the circuit through their qualifying matches to get into the finals and we know where the both of these guys stand so i feel like both of these teams very very tough position for them to be in the, their their time is running out here and their backs are really against the wall and things are running so close for these guys. So Method you can try and put themselves back here in the circuit in terms of standings and Kiwana Gaming is kind of just trying to solidify their spot into that top four because they are fairly close at this moment. But it's game number five in Tyrion Domain. It's Method EU versus Kiwana Gaming. Method qualification potentially on the line if you're just tuning in. We're in week three of circuit play, which means every series you win, you get a point. Top four teams in terms of points are going to qualify to the finale tournament. Uh, and right now, Method EU have not won many series in the circuit. They're desperate, they're dire, they can't afford any more defeats. And Kiwana Gaming have pulled out a miracle composition. Kiwana Gaming have really never beaten Method EU before, but now bringing in the Rogue and the Retribution Paladin, it's looking like a real threat. Finalizing it with the Restoration Shaman as the healer is disrupting a ton of crowd control from the enemy mage, Tessia and Method EU, and they're crossing it with Repentance onto the Holy Paladin, Chaz. They've come with what appears to be a clear answer, and Method EU are responding with more of the same. They're gonna need to perform to their peak here if they wanna find victory. Yeah, and I mean, we're gonna have to see if they can do it Kiwana Gaming, they have kind of an unorthodox composition. We really haven't seen any other teams run it at this point, and Method EU likely doesn't have a lot of practice into it. So they're kind of on the fly right now. Their setups are similar to playing uh, against the Warrior Red. I just think the Rogue makes it a lot more difficult to pull it off. The full blinds, the consistent kid kidney shots. Uh, if he needs to, he can use the Shadow Meld to re-stealth and get Garot Silence, banish Garot Silence, and then of course there's always that threat of that one shot from the Vendetta. I think the Assassination Rogue, especially with that Necro Lord, is really strong. It makes Nixie super uh, durable. And uh, if he can get those pre flesh crafts off, it's going to be a huge shield for him. Or even during the setups, get the flesh craft off, makes it really difficult to actually take him down. So uh, I think Assassination Rogue's kind of underrated right now. Really powerful specialization, and Nixie's playing it really, really well. Actually, like we are. Go ahead. I, I just wanted to ask uh, Van real quick. Do you think uh, Tessia should be playing uh, Adaptation here? Uh, when he's just getting blinded, he's getting hexed on cooldown. 
and just having that one minute auto trinket. I mean, it's gonna proc on kidney shots though, which is a bit scary. Maybe she play human. Uh, yeah, I guess you can't play relentless. And, and yeah, I guess hey, maybe if they played horde. You could play Orc and Adaptation would be a possibility. I feel like I'd be mm. really scared because then Nixie, had, he can just kidney shot Tessia and then every blind is going to sit full, which would be a little bit annoying. But it might be worth it because he is... I was actually thinking about that. He's sitting a lot of crowd control. I don't know if Relentless would be worth it. Probably not because you want to be able to get those trinkets during your combustion, but maybe he could mix it up in some way. Yeah, it's tough. Like when you're playing as a comp deck and just freely hex you like that, it's definitely tough to be the mage. You don't have a, a druid on your team or something like that that can dispel it as well. Yeah. Uh, Tessia, he needs to somehow be more in the game, uh, get get controlled less. But it's just very difficult for him because anytime he gets wind shared, anytime he gets shadow step kicked, anything like that, it just immediately he can get hexed out of it. We get blinded and get hexed out of it. Um, but that that auto trinket is, I think. I think I saw Morrow play it in a, in a similar matchup where he was just getting hexed on CD and it looked okay, but I feel like the, there's also a downside with that, that you can really punish it. You can just blind the mage and then kidney him and smoke bomb him, for example, and get a free ice block and, and you can play around it as well. So uh, I don't know, could be something to consider uh, for Tessia, but we'll see if he just uh, ends up playing the normal trinket. We'll see. Taking their got... their time here to load into Empyrean Domain. Uh, it is game number five, so likely wanting to discuss how they want to deal with things. Maybe they are even just talking about the trinkets like we are uh, currently in the pre-match here. Uh, and this is the last game of Europe, I believe. So it's North America after this. And there's a lot of teams in North America that can't afford to lose either. So there's really nothing but excitement for the rest of the day, even it's moving so past this series. Although this kind of feels like the, the climax uh, that we're about to hit. Um, I, I do wonder maybe if they do want to opt for running adaptation or not. Currently we've zoned in 10 seconds away from starting on Empyrean Domain. Method EU cannot afford to lose. If they want to qualify, Kuana Gaming look to steal away the opportunity of Method EU and dash their hopes. Yeah, I mean, we'll see if they can do it. I mean, Method EU, they're going to really have to rise to the occasion here. Let's see if there's any changes. It doesn't look like it. They're going to be playing the exact same setup. Gladiator's Medallion for Tessia. And let's see how this one goes. Sap out onto Chaz and an open on Zuniaki. This is going to be one of those games where both teams have the opportunity to one shot. But if everyone trades out their defensive cooldowns as they should, it should extend into dampening. Uh, but we'll have to see. Fear now over on Atana uh, into a Polymorph. Good setup here. Let's see who they decide to go after. Nixie going to be re-stealthing with his Shadow Mel, the Karot cheap shot on Zuniaki, completely shutting down that go. And Method D is struggling to find pressure early on. They actually make a swap on Tana. Beautiful Sanctuary there by Kara, freeing Tana from that Hammer of Justice and uh, keeping his team alive. Yeah, and this is a great adaptation here for Method. I think if they want to win this game, they're going to have to go after the healer a little bit more, like they did in that game on Tolvir, where they ended up uh, winning the game on that Priest swap. And I think if they can do that, try to get Tana's Trinket, try to get Kara's Trinket, then they can just focus on that. And it's going to be up to Nixie to kind of be the one playing spoilers, but they're actually going after Nixie here, but Kara not in crowd control, so it should be enough. Uh, Kara should be able to just uh, keep healing Nixie up there. And uh, Nixie, of course, uh, like we pointed out as well, playing that Necrolord Rogue. He's going to have that huge, massive uh, Fleshcraft shield uh, if he needs to as well. So Nixie pretty durable in this matchup. Here comes the Vendetta onto Tessia. Big damage. Jazz is not trading out a cooldown here. He's trying to power through it. And looks like he's going to be able to right now. Nixie spreading out his dots now onto Zuniaki as well. Carrying a full sheep. And nice shadows that kick there on the Ring of Frost. But now Nixie is disoriented from that Venthyr. And now they're going after potentially have to carry here hammer of justice secured onto him but no crowd control onto tana and so far their attempts to get tana's trinket has been unsuccessful Kara's gonna have that trinket rotating back in 45 seconds so we should be able to use that trinket sanctuary if they try to set something up onto tana once again so so far it's looking pretty good here for kawana gaming in the initial stages chance already down to 50 percent and needs to try to look for a drink as soon as his team can land a setup all right, 
Nixie getting bursted. Cloak of Shadows trades for Void Form and Combustion, a high value Cloak of Shadows here. But now they're swapping to Kara, blasting him out, and they're trying to recover without using the Divine Shield. Two cooldowns for one push is definitely too devastating, and they managed to hold on to the Divine Shield. Now stunning up Tessia. The main advantage of this map for Method EU is definitely going to be Chaz finding drinks, and I really think that's going to be important. Look at the deficit right now for Method EU, already down to 50% mana. This is devastating, but they are finding cooldowns, so they have a choice. Either set up for drinks, play for the late game, or just keep playing aggressive and try and go for the kill. These are the choices that they're going to need to make, and Chaz is trying to sit down for a drink. Tana moves in to go for a hex. Chaz dodges the cap totem, moving over to the left. Got a tiny bit of mana. Gets stunned on his Avenging Wrath, though. Big hit of damage onto Tessia. Master Spell comes up from Zuniaki, getting Chaz out of crowd control. Now they're swapping to Zuniaki, trying to blast him out, attacking the closest wizard. A good strategy to not expose Tana on this large map that Method EU have selected. Yeah, I mean, right now, there's a Dragon's Breath on Tana. Full Polymorph lands. Where is Kara going to go? Straight to the pillar, and Nixie's going to be playing kind of bodyguard for him, getting the cheap shot onto Thessia. But finally, some crowd control does land. Is there a combustion? There is, but opting not to use it just yet. There's a combustion. Big damage on Kara, but out of line of sight, really not getting too much value from it. Thessia not going to be happy with that one, getting a little bit of pressure here on the Nixie, but Riptide more than enough to keep Nixie alive. In terms of mana, Chaz has been doing a really good job maintaining it at this point. Kitty shot onto Zuniaki. That's going to be the sacrifice. A surprising burst coming in. This is the Vendetta. This is the Avenging Wrath. The damage is not over yet. And they could continue this. Repentance onto Chaz. That sacrifice is going to be freeing him from that. But Dispersion Ooh. trades out as well. And you can just see what a heavy hit of damage that is. A full hammer of justice lands onto Chaz. And they're just continuing this offensive push. Yeah, very, very nice pressure so far. And defense still looking good. Nixie just got his Cloak of Shadows back up. Dragon's Breath coming out onto Tana. Uh, Polymorph attempt gets Shadow Step kick there. Here's the Ring of Frost. Potential for a Wind Shear. Tana's going to save that Wind Shear. Try to get it on a Poly instead. And if he does, then it's going to allow him to land those Hexes. There it is. Wind Shear on the Poly, but no Hex to follow it up. DR Sheep onto Kara. Now they're making their way over onto Tessia here. Once again, there's the kidney shot potentially coming out here onto uh, Tessia. He gets kicked. And uh, Nixie's still holding onto it a little bit. They're actually going to use it onto Zuni instead. And uh, Kara is going to do some split damage here. Now Kara, actually Nixie in a lot of trouble. Trinket's out. Actually, no, he gets dispelled and gets the Cloak of Shadows. What a nice dispel there by Tana right in between. Or was, uh, was it the Sanctuary actually there by Kara? Uh, dispelling that either way very nicely done there that's going to save nixie from actually having to use his trinket in addition to that nice setup there by method as well we just hit dampening here both here's kind of tied to mana there's a smoke bomb now onto zuniaki he does have his he actually doesn't have dispersion mm -hmm. or fade takes a big hit of damage there Chaz also forced to trade out his trinket there in that exchange and i mean nixie has his blind if nixie wants to he doesn't have to blind the mage he can blind Chaz and try to get a blessing of protection out of the way as well that way and, and set up for his next vendetta as long as his blind gets a blessing of protection he's going to be in a good spot nice shadow step kidney there onto tessia as soon as tana gets dragon's breath shutting down the sheep right there now he's going for his fleshcraft tana is going to get sheep right there but big fleshcraft shield should be enough there to keep nixie alive there's no combustion on the setup kick on the ring of frost and now nixie could be looking for the blind here i'm not sure uh, if he's gonna, no, he's just gonna go ahead and go after Zuni. Nice distract there as well on, on Chaz to stop the drink there, but Chaz was able to get a little bit of mana. Uh, still, both of these teams are very much so in the game. It uh, could be anybody's game at this point. Nixie, no clock for 40 seconds is, uh, I think, the biggest opening here on the map. All right, let's see if they can take advantage of it here. Method you can't afford any more mistakes. Tana and Crowd Control, Kara isolated, huge swing of damage. Kara going to trade Divine Shield, and they're not going for a Master Spell. He fishes for a Repentance onto the Paladin, trying to turn the tables here, but it's during Combustion. This is a risky time to go for a kill on match point. Can they do it? They're trying to take out Zuniaki. They win sure Tessia. Combustion's over. They're trying to stay on the Shadow Priest, put out as much pressure as possible, and they do at least net a Dispersion. However, winning on mana is not looking too great at this point, with Chaz being relatively equal to Tana at 11% dampening, a bit surprising. Divine Shield out of the way. This is a very scary moment for Kara in the game. No longer having that safety net to rely on to survive. Nixie has Cloak of Shadows though, so maybe Nixie can look to make a play here. Moving forward, let's see what they can get done. Nixie's moving over at Zuniaki. They're trying to pressure both casters away, but Tessia blinks in. Kara gets stunned up. Nixie gets feared and stunned. Nixie trinkets out to try and help support Kara during the silence. Will it be enough? 
Looks like it's buying Kara enough time to get to a Word of Glory. Likely needs to get another Word of Glory here. Gonna go for the Avenging Wrath. Pop a big Hammer of Wrath on Azunyaku with that Wake of Ashes to generate Holy Power, heal himself back up to full. Repentance casted by Kara. Chaz can't avoid it. Zuni not fishing for a Master Spell. He's still just holding on to it. And now just counter pressuring during the Repentance. Let's see what they can get done. Doesn't look like too much. Kara's coming back to try and assist Tana. Not able to really do too much here. Ring of Frost in the corner, not finding it. Tana's just line of sighting. These toothpick pillars, uh, as they've been trademarked, <laughs> can be quite difficult to line of sight and avoid crowd control on. Kara is afraid to make a push right now with no Divine Shield. Rightly so on match point. Stunned up. Triple crowd control. The beautiful Whoa! setup by Method EU. And they're really not going to use a medallion on this setup? They're trying to get oh, greedy on it? Three. No, they have to. Medallion Spirit Link comes down just in time. Good trade on the Combustion Power Infusion. Now is the opportunity to turn it around. Yeah, definitely at this point. I mean, Method EU, that was a great push from them. They get a lot of cooldowns, and I feel like Kiwana Gaming, they're going to have to play very conservative at this point. Nixie's going to have to basically be the one to push out and get pressure. Kara just going to be throwing in some kind of ranged healing, a little bit of ranged damage if he can. Also, not going to be feeling safe until that Divine Shield is up. But when Divine Shield is available in just a little bit under one minute, I, I, I think that's going to be a good opportunity for Kiwana Gaming to actually push in. At this point in dampening, we can see the Assassination Rogue pressure really heavy here on Zuniaki. Zuniaki's pushing in. Uh, Method EU, they really want to force the issue. Hammer of Justice, a full polymorph. This is going to be the game. There's nothing Kara can do. Method EU, they hold on. They win game number five. They stay alive. I mean, their dreams of making it to that top four are going to be alive. And, well, a beautiful setup, picking their moment to push in. And that was a really nice victory from them. Yeah, that was really, really well done there at the end as well. Uh, they waited patiently there. Tessia uh, didn't fall for that Fleshcraft on his Dragon's Breath. He waited, he allowed himself to get hexed even, and he triggered the hex, got the crowd control, and they got the kill. That set up right before that as well, where they got the Trinket and the Spirit Link. Very, very nicely done there. And uh, Method EU, they desperately needed this win to kind of stay in the circuit here. So uh, congrats to them actually for getting it. That was an insanely close series. And I mean, here we can see right at the end what happens here. So, uh, I mean, at this point, they're in a basically checkmate situation. And no trinket on Tana, no trinket on Nixie, and no bubble on Kara. Apparently, Kara has his uh, own trinket though, which is, I guess, the only thing they can really work with here. But we're gonna see what happens here. So there's the Fleshcraft. Tessia just waits here with his Dragon's Breath. He's not using it into it. He tanks the Hex. He waits, trinkets, gets a double Dragon's Breath, sheeps up Tana, and uh, Kara here should have just immediately trinketed. I'm not actually sure and maybe he, it's because he's playing human maybe he actually didn't have it because he used his human racial but uh regardless uh very very nicely set up there and uh, good patience there from tassia as well to land that cc chain and, and to set up that kill all right method you take